Hi everyone, my name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee and today I'm going to be doing a wrap up for the end of October. Today I'm only going to talk about the stuff that I've read since the mid month of October, but I'm going to give you stats for the whole month. I split it because I thought I was going to have a lot to talk about in the entire of October. However, uh, this month has kind of been very up and down with my reading. So in total, I read 12 things, which was a 2,961 pages. Um, I read six ebooks. I had one DNF. There was two physical books and four audiobooks. Yes. So that, that adds up. So um, we have to talk about a few things. Um, I think I only have like four things to talk about in this video, but we'll get through it. So this will be quick. Uh, the first thing I read in the last half of this month was Catwoman When in Rome, which is by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. This is the last part of the Long Halloween trilogy. Um, in this, we're following Catwoman as she goes to Rome. Uh, this is sort of a side plot and a bit of filler information from the larger story, especially in the dark victory part of this um, book we kind of figure out, we kind of fill in the gaps of what we didn't know Catwoman was doing. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I like Catwoman overall and I thought this um, exploration of her character and kind of what she was going through was super interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, I did think it was a little bit dated, a little bit um, sexist at certain points and also a little bit uh, focused on Catwoman's sexuality a lot. That is part of her, it is sort of part of what she uses to distract people as well as part of sh what she uses to like be as good of a thief as she is. However, it felt like we were more focused on it as a male gazy kind of way than for the part of her being um, a good thief. So uh, this was good. It wasn't great. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't my favorite of these three uh, companion novels. Then I finished up The Women Who Could Fly by Megan Giddings, and this I actually listened to an audiobook and read along. I actually put a few tabs in here because this was supposed to be my, my um, book for a book club this month, for a book club I'm in. Uh, in this, we are following Josephine, whose mother disappeared 14 years ago. And in this world, magic and witchcraft, specifically witchcraft, is a punishable and burnable offense for women. Um, so because Josephine's mother disappeared, she is sort of under the microscope of possibly being um, accused of witchcraft. Like they're watching her for witchcraft and she is approaching uh, 30, which after which she would have to be registered and monitored for signs of witchcraft since she is unmarried. Um, and this is kind of the story of Josephine discovering um, kind of what is going on with her mom. She's kind of trying to figure out what happened to her mom and where she went and if she disappeared, if she's still alive. And it's her exploring that. Uh, I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, I listened to the audiobook, like I said, and I also followed along with the book. I don't think this is going to be for everyone. The storytelling is non-linear. Um, we're following Josephine uh, through this arc of this, this story, but we are jumping back and forth a lot between her in present day and the things that she is remembering about her mother, about her uh, childhood, about things that happened since her mom disappeared and kind of her reflecting on all these different things. Um, it is a, um, Josephine is a bi black woman in this world that really wants to have women get married and have children and not ask any questions. And this world feels very, very threatening to her specifically, but overall it feels threatening to women as well. Um, I think this was a great exploration of that. There's a lot of metaphor and um, kind of exploration of um, all of these things in here. And I thought it was a excellent book. I really enjoyed this. But like I said, the, this, the, the storytelling, the writing part of it isn't gonna be for everyone, but I thought it was very, very valuable and um, explored a lot of really interesting topics. So I can't wait to get to this with book club. Book club got delayed, but I can't wait to get to this and talk to people about it. Then I read The Bone Way by Holly J. Underhill, which is 
uh, a very inter I saw a tweet about this on Twitter, which actually ended up being by the author, and it's she kind of listed all these things that were sapphic vibes, stories with Orpheus and Eurydice vibes, themes of death and immortality, as well as I'll die because before I lose you, I thought I said love you for a second, and bones. And all of those things appeal to me, plus the cover is great, which I will have up here, and I was really interested in this. In this, we are following two characters whose names I am 100% not going to remember. Um, Tegan, uh, as well as Cress Cressida, um, and Cressida. I'm not sure how to say the other character's name, but Tegan is um, our main character who we're following and her wife, Cress, has gone missing. She has gone onto the bone way in order to try and find a way to save Tegan because Tegan was attacked by a poisonous animal and it bit her and there is no cure for the po poison. So they have been working to try and figure out if there is a cure and they've been recently told that there is not. So they've found this magical road that takes them to a sorceress type person that makes deals and could possibly cure the poison because it was one of her creatures that bit Tegan. So the two of them are journeying on this road separately and we're following Tegan's point of view as she takes on the trials of this road in order to try and find her wife and also try and uh, solve her, her poison problem. I liked this. Um, I thought there were some issues with it because um, I thought we were trying to do too much, basically. Um, there was a lot of switching back and forth between um, sort of Tegan would be going through these trials and then something in the trial would remind her um, of a memory that we would go back and experience with her. Again, sort of non-linear storytelling where, you know, she's experiencing these memories and we're getting backstory through that, through that methodology. Um, which worked okay, um, but for me personally, I was having a hard time believing why we were going after Cress. Um, it, I just felt like we were introduced to this relationship at a point that was very stressed and where I would be like very like upset and Tegan was uh, focused on kind of trying to tell us their love story and it was kind of a mismatch for me like I was having a hard time um with these memories that were so full of love and this moment that was so full of stress and worry and anger and you know like all of this was sort of mismatched together so I thought we were trying to do a little bit too much with also building the world and the world kind of fell flat for me on this one uh, I didn't really, it, it felt like we dove into this shadow realm where they were going on this road, but I didn't know anything about the world that they lived in, but we kept referencing the world that they lived in. So it was very middle of the road for me. I think I gave it a three stars. Um, I liked the overall like vibes of it that Deacon was, loved her wife and that uh, Cress was going to do anything she could in order to save Tegan and you know it did have a little bit of that um Eurydice and I'm always forgetting the other character's name in that story Eurydice and Orpheus vibes like it did have a little bit of that but not enough that I was like oh yeah this is definitely that vibe like so it was a little all over the place for me um but overall I did like it. I would like um, to see Underhill take on a full novel because I think this was like 60 or so pages like it was a novella which like she doesn't mention in her like bullet points so when I clicked on it and borrowed it from Hoopla I was expecting a longer story and um, I just had to adjust my expectations which was a little bit difficult because I was already reading but overall um, I did, I did like it. I mean, I didn't hate it. I, I did like it, but I just struggled a little bit with all of those things. 
Then the last thing I finished this month was Wanted, an author by K.J. Charles, and this was a little novella epilogue thing that we followed the characters from Wanted a Gentleman, which I read a few years ago, and I liked that one. It's not my favorite K.J. Charles, but I really liked this epilogue and I thought it was very fun. Um, I liked seeing these two characters, which I forgot how much I liked the characters in that. It was more the plot that was the problem. Um, and it made me interested to read A Band Sinister, which is something I actually picked up kind of recently. So I, I'm glad I read this. It worked out well because the epilogue kind of leads into that other story. So I'm excited for that. Um, and this was just, like I said, a short little epilogue. Was fun to read and was a nice way to end my month. But I still have quite a bit of books that I have started in the month of October that I haven't read. So I'm hoping to finish a bunch more things in November and you will probably see more thoughts from me then. But if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the books that I've read this month, please let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see me again, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye. Hi everyone. My name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee. And today, oops.